Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome back to The Correct Views. I am Sam I. B. reporting for The Media Speaks, and look them up at us up at Media Speaks at TheMediaSpeaks.com. All right, friends, I'm going to get into the news. Um, for those of you that don't know, I post randomly. Um, it, I work very strange hours, but I'm also doing articles now on TheMediaSpeaks.com. So um, if I haven't posted in a while, make sure you go there. I, it's been uh, rather active last week. I hope I can remain uh, even close to that active. It was a uh, very good week to join. All right. How many of you watch the Piers Morgan, Alex Jones debate? I wasn't even going to get to this. I just want to mention it really quick at the beginning. Alex Jones has done more for this channel just by posting this, our videos from time to time than anything. If it wasn't for Alex Jones, the movie Bilderberg probably would have never been made. He has been nothing but an asset to this show, and this show is very thankful to Alex Jones. But I'm nothing if not honest. Every word that Alex Jones said to Piers Morgan was on point. I mean, Alex was on fire. But that fire went so far that people that don't know who Alex Jones is, or people that only have associated him with the liberty movement, he seemed almost out of control. And again, the man did not misspeak. He, he spoke wonderfully with his facts. He was articulate. But he seemed like he was incapable of having a discussion. Maybe it's the way that it was edited. Maybe it's something that happened behind the scenes. Who knows? But in some ways, it was kind of an opportunity lost. Because what he said was on point in every way. I just wish that it had been said in a way that people that had heard about this um, and people that are on the fence in terms of the Second Amendment, I wish it would have been done in such a way that it was, uh, it looked like it was more in control. I guess that's what I wish for. But in any event, Alex Jones standing up and speaking the truth for the movement, and we, of course, are thankful. All right. SHTFPplan.com. If you are on this list, you may be in grave danger. Nobody knows what that means. That's what it's called. It's shithitsthefanplan.com. They abbreviate it. Over the weekend, a mainstream media website on the East Coast published, presumably in the interest of public safety, a complete list of individuals and businesses that are licensed to carry or own firearms. Now, I'm happy that I didn't do this story when I first got it, because I have it now in sets of threes, and this is insane. Much to the amusement of those who would confiscate firearms from law-abiding citizens, the list, complete with an interactive map, essentially allows those who are preparing to commit such crimes as burglary, robbery, or worse, to locate specific addresses where residents are armed. The problem, of course, is that in their haste to publicly out embarrass illegal gun owners, the Journal News, and that'll be important in a minute, actually did exactly the opposite of the intended purpose of their exclusive breaking report. Now, this is dated the 27th of December, and I was going to get to it, and then other people did, and I wasn't going to, but as this progresses, you'll see why I did it this way. Um, this idiot paper, the Journal News, um, let, me, let me explain this to you real quick. Larry, Curly, and Moe have a house. Larry's not armed. Curly's not armed, and Mo is. Criminals are going to go to Larry and Curly's house because the newspaper just told them who was armed. 
I didn't want to do this because I was worried that I was going to do the report and then more people were going to look this up and find it archived and find people that weren't armed and that I was going to be helping facilitate the unarmed masses getting robbed and I didn't want the correct views to do that. It has now been so widely reported on and now that I said like it's happened in threes, I, I had the report on it. I simply had to. I go get a gun, especially if you're on that list. Um, so what happens? Blogger turns tables on gun map paper, Katie Glurick at Politico. A blogger who retaliated against a New York paper that came under fire for identifying people with gun licenses in its circulation explained on Thursday why he published the names and home addresses of the paper's employees. So a blogger felt that a target had been painted on a very wide number of people. So he returned the favor by painting the target back and listed exactly where these people lived, opening them up to criminals, opening them up to criminals just like the paper did to them. Now I know there's a smile on my face, but let me be clear. I am not in favor of harming anyone. If you have these addresses to their house, send them one non-threatening, polite letter as to why their newspaper betrayed many Americans and then don't send any more. I don't have a problem with it. You do not harass people over the mail, and if you do, please don't do it in the name of this show. However, if you do that, it is fine. I am not in favor of this, but I am reporting on it because I have a point to get to. And this is the three, for those of you keeping count. Business Insider. Threats against a New York newspaper have gotten so intense that reporters are worried about anthrax. Do me a favor. Don't do anything this stupid ever for the correct views. How about that? This is why I opened the show the way I did. We need to remember that we need to stick up for our gun rights, but we do not need to become people that are terrorists. Okay? Draw the line there. There are way. I mean, you can inundate them. You can do lots of things, but this is beyond the pale. The saga surrounding a Westchester, New York newspaper's decision to publish an interactive map showing the names and addresses of gun owners has taken an even more dramatic turn. Report reporters are reportedly receiving envelopes filled with white powder and feel so unsafe sleeping in their homes that the newspaper is shelling out money for hotel rooms. It goes on. The Journal News <clears throat> map plots out names and addresses of registered gun owners in the Westchester and Rockland counties. The map sparked strong community outrage. Well, I already told you about the community outrage. All right. From the Times story, some reporters have reached, received notes saying that they would be shot on the way to their cars. Bloggers have encouraged people to steal credit card information from journal news employees. Two packages containing white powder have been sent to the newsroom and a third to a reporter's home. All were tested by police and proved to be harmless. Is that bad reporting, or did the police test the anthrax? Because, unless that's, I'm assuming it's bad reporting, but let's hope we're not having police testing anthrax. And they're not scientists! But hopefully that's not what it says it is, and we'll move on. Please, don't be what it says it is. All right, um, there's one, one thing that needs to be noted in this, and I, we're not going to say it's a good thing because there's nothing good in this last piece, but there's something positive in it. This is the fury that a newspaper got regarding the removal of guns from the American people. It is not a good idea to come after people's guns. I'm threatening nobody. Watch my videos. I'm in favor of harming absolutely no one. I've taken martial arts lessons, number of fist fights that I have started, absolutely zero. I'm in favor of hurting no one. People are going to get hurt if certain people come after guns. That 
is the correct view, whether you like it or not. And I'm not condoning it. I'm saying, look what happened to this paper just for one, one, one spark in what could be a forest fire here. Do not come after the people's guns. Natural news, severe acute kidney injuries in humans double due to GMO foods. No surprise here. Severe acute kidney injuries have doubled over the last decade and continue to rise by 10% a year according to a hot new study out of the University of California, San Francisco. Raymond K. Sue, HSU, bless you, MD had a UCSF nephrologist who led the research said that was a staggering revelation of how increasingly common and how life-threatening acute kidney injury has become over the past decade in the United States. Of course, doctors are clueless and cannot account for the rise in acute kidney injury. I'm going to tell this story to everyone that will listen. My dad died of a gallbladder cancer that went to his liver, which is very, very common among people who are alcoholics. I passed judgment on nobody. The man never drank. I saw him drunk four times in my whole life, and none of those were within the last 15 years. So how does that kind of cancer come unless it's things that are in our foods? Genetically Modified Organisms. My New Year's resolution for this show was to make sure that people understood what I was talking about and I didn't just shoot through the articles and that's what I'm doing right now. So if you already know what GMO is, just give me a second, you know why I'm doing this. For those of you that don't, maybe you clicked on for another article. Our food is being genetically changed. Things like pesticides are being put in them. Roundup. And it is said to be at such low levels that it's not hurting us. Well, we're seeing things like this that are the exact symptoms of things like pesticide poisoning. Now that I've kept my New Year's resolution, we will go forward. Meanwhile, the latest word from the American Society of Nephrology says that the total number of deaths associated with dialysis requiring acute kidney injuries rose from 18,000 in 2000 to nearly 39,000 in 2009. That's more than double in a decade. When you look at all of the studies that are coming out showing kidney failure and injuries in study animals after 90 days of GMO foods, it doesn't take a genius to figure out why. GMO is death. Okay? And I know there are people out there that say that it's saving starving people. And it's not. You grow natural food if you quit paying certain farmers in the United States and other countries to not farm in order to keep crop prices at a certain level. That is also a fact. Having said that, I'm pretty libertarian. No surprise there, huh? If you want to eat this, I don't care. Do not let it cross-pollinate and label it. And they don't want it labeled. Well, they didn't want cigarettes labeled, and when they finally got labeled, it was when the overwhelming amount of evidence made it so that they had no choice but to do so. And then they used words like may make you ill. Don't wait, people. We have more data on this, so please look it up. Mail online, two stories I want to get to real quick. Plea for help from Chinese labor camp, a worker paid $1.61 per month, found stuffed in Oregon's woman's Halloween's deco Halloween decorations from Kmart. This is such a strange story, and it's very, very sad. For all of you that think that outsourcing is making our country a better place, or maybe you think we're helping, with, we're helping other countries that we send our money to. All right. Let's see how we're helping the Chinese by sending our Halloween decorating companies to China. Let's see the help. Oregon mother Julie Keith expected to find styrofoam headstones in the graveyard kit that she bought at Kmart for Halloween. 
What she didn't expect was a desperate plea for help from one of the Chinese laborers forced to make the holiday decorations in brutal conditions. Fortunately, she had this for two years before she opened it. Otherwise, they might have been able to pinpoint who this was, and he probably would have been killed. Um, listen to this. Listen to how we're helping them. Thousands, it's, it's, tra the, the speaking errors are because it's translated from Chinese, not because I'm drunk. Thou Thousands of people here are under the persecution of the Chinese Communist Party government. We'll thank you and remember you forever. If you occasionally buy this product, please kindly resend this letter to the World Human Rights Organization, the unsigned note that was folded into eights red. The letter's author said that the Halloween product was made in Masanaji, not Masanaja, M-A-S-A-N-J-I-A, -A, good luck, labor camp in Xinjiang, China, where laborers are forced to work for 15 hours a day without time off for weekends and holidays. Otherwise, the letter goes on, they will suffer torment, beat, and rude remark. Nearly no payment, they wrote in choppy English, accompanied by Chinese characters. The police said workers at the labor camp make over 10 yen a month, the equivalent to $1.61. So not only are we dealing with a massive problem here regarding unemployment figures that are going through the roof, we sent this to other countries, and now we're dealing with this mess. Um, I'm going to cover this story, and then I'm going to go ahead and rip, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and do the ripping first. ABCnews.com. You will not hear ABCnews.com talked about very often on this show, because ABC News likes to give you so many pop-ups and have these things start running the moment that your script comes up that it shuts down your computer if you have a whole series of tabs up like I do to do this show. And I have seven gigs of RAM, and you people, listen, you hear that? ABC News, that is why you will not be on this show very often in the future. You're a pain, mainstream media. Nobody listens, so they make you listen. If you click it by accident, you can't dare click off. Space travel has always been portrayed as risky. No air or water, extreme temperatures, a place where even a small miscalculation can be fatal. It can also be hazardous to your brain health, particularly on a three-year-long mission to Mars, according to a study published this week in the scientific journal PLOS One. Cosmic radiation could cause Alzheimer's in Mars astronauts, ABC, who can't get anyone to listen, so they have to sneak you into it, right? The eight-year-long study conducted at the NASA Space Radiation Laboratory at Brookhaven National Laboratory on New York's Long Island found that the cosmic radiation of such a mission could accelerate the onset of Alzheimer's disease. NASA is working on sending astronauts to a passing asteroid in the 2020s and talk of a trip to Mars in the 2030s. It would take three years with current technology to get there and back. Current spacecraft are not heavily shielded from the cosmic radiation crew members would encounter. Now, I mentioned that there's other ways to do this. Um, is, uh, finding better uh, anti-radiation shielding for the uh, ship, for one. But let's look at this in another way. Three years worth of radiation in space. Am I the only one that would love to know? How many years of radiation, daily cell phone use, equals to a three-year space flight to Mars and back? I use a cell phone, but they say that you don't need those little cases for them. Are they lying? Because whenever it deals with something in space, or whenever it deals with something that they can't sell us, then the radiation is dangerous. But every time the radiation, no matter how big it is, and I'm not saying cell phones is large, I'm talking about radiological accumulation, what's called background radiation, which grows 
No matter how big this grows, it's still safe as long as they can sell it to us. So go read the uh, ABC article. I'll try to read it somewhere other than ABC unless you want your computer to lock up or you happen to be running a computer the size of a Kraftwerk machine. You are listening to The Correct Views. Thank you for doing so. Good night, friends. God bless. Please donate if you can because every penny that you give me goes to a better show for you. Thanks.